Hi, everybody. We're here. Thanks for joining us uh, for this practice and time of connecting with ourselves and each other. Hmm. So the practice tonight is inspired by an interview with um, Tom Powers was, uh, just let this person in, interviewing Anna DuVernay, who is a director of um, a new film that's out called Origins, Origin, Origin. And this film is based on, it follows the writer Isabel Wilkerson as she was writing her bestseller that was called is called Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents, um, written in 2020, and a bestseller and a very important book. Um, and I'll put the link both for that book and for this um, radio interview with Tom Power and Ava DuVernay uh, down below in the YouTube link, and it's here in the Zoom chat. Hmm. It was really, it's a very interesting interview where Ava talks about when she first read this book as, um, as a black female identified person that she disagreed with a lot of it didn't resonate for her. Um, and then on second read, um, it, it something clicked and landed and made sense. And I, I don't want to speak to her experience of that, but uh, what I heard from what she shared was that the book cast puts forth that, um, that the systems of caste of uh, superiority and inferiority and that societal placement that affects every aspect of life underpins all otherings, whether it's by gender or race or sexuality or ableism, et cetera. And um, so at first, this uh, film director, Ava, was saying, you know, she didn't agree with that because of the different identifies identities she was living with. Um, and then it, it started to make sense for her as, as she looked at it more an, another time. And mm, yeah, I, I don't want to repeat the interview. It's worth listening to. So um, check it out if you're interested. But In the interview, Tom Power was saying that he's been for several years practicing and studying what he called mindfulness. And he mentioned metta meditation, which um, is a cultivation of friendliness, loving kindness, interconnectedness, good wishes. Uh, aspirations for each other and for ourselves and he didn't credit who told him this but he said someone suggested he practice in this way that I'm going to describe so the cred for this goes to Tom Powers teacher or friend or someone that suggested this way of practicing with this and the the i the way he described it was that being uh, on public transit like subway or bus or streetcar um this can be practiced anywhere but that was the context and that you kind of um choose someone to be in your awareness look at them have a sense of them but you know he as he points out 
don't be creepy. Don't stare at them or anything. Just, you know, take note of someone. And then uh, uh, it really struck me when he said this. Um, remember, reflect that they have already had um, the best day of their lives so far. <laughs> like, oh my gosh that's true so far in their life thus far they've had a best day and um and then he's you know to imagine that them going through that and see what feelings that touches for you what that opens in in our imagining our connecting uh of of that for that person and then um also remembering and knowing that they've also had the worst day of their lives thus far that's that's powerful and imagine them going going through that we don't know what people's worst days have been thus far but even just the awareness that everybody has had a worst day and a best day thus far. And, and then he said, and then to look at them again, or just, you know, be aware of them again. And uh, I've been practicing with this. It's really, really interesting how, what it, what it touches and what it, um, how it connects us with each other that um, this film director, Ava DuVernay, was talking about grief and how um, she was trying to imagine a world without caste and that the, a world without caste exists beyond space and time and from her expl exploration, it exists in our interconnectedness around grief. And she said, not so much around love, because not everybody has had the privileges to experience love and um, all the different forms of love. Not everybody has, but everyone has experienced grief. And so she was uh, offering connecting uh, in this way through our our grief um, as a way that is beyond this, the space and time and um, beyond caste, beyond separation and hierarchy. Um, and this maybe a way that resonates for you of uh, that can help us to understand our our neighbors our community our family our workmates all these things um in a way that can be very profound and transformative it can to to reflect on every uh, particularly neutral people that we don't usually pay attention to or, um, well, really any, um, you know, people we have conflicts with and people we feel very dear and connected with. It, it, it has an effect on all these relationships, but it uh, has the ability to counter us, to counteract a sense of loneliness and separation to, um, you know, even if we're not um, out or interacting with other people, even to bring that awareness into heart mind of, um, you know, calling into awareness someone that's delivering something to your door or that lives nearby or is walking down the street. Um, you can practice in that way. I've been finding that uh, reflecting and practicing in this way also counters envy that when we 
see or reflect or know that someone is that we're feeling imagining what their best day was they've had the best day of their lives thus far and it, to feel that joy it's called mudita in the dharma resonant or harmonic uh, where we're in harmony with resonating with sometimes it's called sympathetic joy but it's sympathetic as in like a symphony not sympathy so it's a resonant joy in the joy of others in their happiness in their well-being in their safety etc and uh so practicing in this way counters a sense of envy like why why do they have that and i want that um which is natural and we all have this um at different times to different degrees for sure um and this is one of our meditation practices that that uh, helps open the heart with that contraction. So it can counter these aspects and it can also cultivate and promote other skillful, wholesome, onward leading qualities like uh, like patience. If somebody's being, you know, it is uh, annoying us. This opening to the possibility, hmm, maybe this is the worst day of their life so far. I was noticing this even driving today on the on uh, some of the major roadways or highways that, uh, you know, maybe they're having a really bad day. And uh, just it, it cultivated some patience. Um, and also karuna, compassion, which is another one of our heart abode practices, like I mentioned, mudita, joy, and karuna means compassion. So to let ourselves connect that everybody has had a worse day of their lives thus far, um, even the youngest beings, you know, doesn't matter how old they are, they've had days where they've had terrible belly aches or you know whatever is happening in a little body that is like that's their they're having their worst day thus far in their short life you know no, no matter what the age it just brings so much compassion and and the deepest aspiration may your suffering pass may you may you find peace may you feel ease um, this way of practicing and reflecting, I found also cultivates generosity. I was, I was in a, a food court today and, uh, I'm always, uh, are often aware of the people that are cleaning up the tables in the food courts for folks and, uh, I was thinking, you know what, is there anything I can do to help this person's day move towards being a best day or a better day for them? It, it brings generosity, interconnectedness to reflect mm, for anybody. Is there anything that's in my ability to help this day move towards a best or better day for this person? Um, like compassion related is empathy, empathizing, connecting with um, whatever is happening for others. And that's the, um, the main thrust of these practice, I think, is connectedness, interconnectedness, and the truth of that. When we can get so contracted and so isolated and feeling so separate, um, this practice really opens us to everyone in what we understand in the dharma is called anicca interconnectedness um that we, none of us are a separate isolated permanent self um
Mm. Yeah, so I, I found it, it was interesting how it kind of surprised me, the phrasing of it, that I'd never had that thought in that way before that whoever I'm reflecting on, including myself, including ourselves, is yeah, I too have had a worst day of my life thus far. And I was kind of just letting that be there. Don't need to go digging around for it, but just to see what comes up as feeling like a a worst day. And it was kind of surprising um, what things showed up as uh, really painful days. And, um, and also best day. That was even more surprising because <laughs> the things that showed up for me around a best day really involved um, suffering. <laughs> I mean, we could say lots about that, but um, it, what others might describe as suffering. So for me, what, what showed up as a best day was um, being with my dad when he died and, and uh, it was so sacred and, profound and rare and precious and uh, all, uh, all the everythings, uh, you know, and so some might say, well, that's such a sad thing, but it's, it, it, it showed up as a, one of the best days, like such a, such a precious sacred time to be um, with him in that transition. Uh, another one that showed up for me as a, best day was uh, <laughs> I I'm, won't describe it because some of you have heard it too many times but uh, um, my first long meditation retreat and uh, having an insight into suffering and the ending of suffering uh, and so it was a super painful experience but so uh so worth it and so joyful um, to go through it. Yeah, so mm, mm, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to share about those. Um, I'm going <laughs> to keep my worst days to myself. Okay. Is that right? Let me see. Yes. Um, so let's let's practice with this and um, see see how it see how it lands for you. So I'm just gonna adjust my posture. If you like to adjust your lighting or turn away from the computer. Um, turn off any distractions if you like, if that's helpful for you. And just from bringing up this topic of best days, worst days, it already may be really uh, challenging and uh, stirring up. So if it feels helpful to place a hand at your heart or your belly, another tender way to offer touch and care and support to ourselves can be just giving a, a hug or holding your face. So really allow yourself whatever support you need to Take gentle care and awareness. So that you can begin to land in your seat in the center of the present moment with with all of yourself, your heartaches 
and your joys. And if you feel very activated, it can be helpful to look around your space or to look at something beautiful, peaceful. And if it feels available, coming to rest with the eyes resting. And we just want to take time to allow ourselves to land. Feel the solidity, the heaviness, the presence of your bones. The weightedness. Letting the bones support you and rest. So that softness can come to the muscles and the flesh, the skin. Inviting some space, some softness, ease across the face. through the muscles at the center of the forehead, hinge of the jaw, noticing where you hold tension or grief or fear. And just inviting some caring awareness and softness with it. Feeling into the muscles of the neck, letting them lengthen so the shoulder bones drop down. Down through the elbows into the relaxed hands. course, if it feels supportive or helpful, you can continue to place your hands or hold your hands, just inviting a relaxed hand as it as you're doing those gestures. Feeling into the muscles around the ribs and the chest, the breathing muscles and Seeing if they can soften and ease a little bit so there's a bit more freedom of breath arising and passing. Taking a few deeper breaths if it feels helpful. And then feeling into the muscles of the inner belly. And seeing if some, some degree of letting go or softening can happen there. The deep inner belly is an area of mm, nervous system activation that can keep us really in a fight, flight, freeze response. So just check out if there's tension there. I find I have to repeatedly relax over and over and over.
And as we soften, perhaps now we feel a bit heavier or a bit more grounded, presenced through the weight of the pelvis, the hips. and down through the legs, into the feet. Allowing ourselves to be held by the earth as we rest with the earth in relationship, in the same way we are in relationship with each other. And we'll have a few more moments of silence here together, just continuing to relax, land, grounding, presencing. And this practice was offered as a way to connect um, to what is normally seen as neutral people, perhaps on public transit or somewhere public like that. Uh, but for this practice this evening, mm, there could be an awareness of someone else who's practicing with us at this time, or someone that's in the um, home or neighborhood where you are. Could be someone that you see fairly regularly in a shop or at work. So just trust whatever arises in awareness, just choosing one person to practice with in this, this session. There's no right or wrong person. They're kind of standing in for all the people that we are interconnected with. So there may be a image or just a remembering or a felt experience of this person. And then remembering that they've they've already had the best day of their lives so far. I won't exactly know what that was, of course, but just imagine them going through that, whatever that was. Where they may have felt loved or connected 
or joy or felt seen, cared for, felt safe. Felt peaceful in nature. Allow yourself to touch into this quality of mudita, resonant joy. Feel your own heart, mind, and body a little bit energized, uplifted. Imagining them going through, experiencing the best day of their lives so far. And then allow yourself to just organically cultivate the aspiration or wish, intention. May your joy continue. May this flourish in your life. May your happiness grow. Just trust whatever uh, mudita bhavana and cultivation of resonant joy is arising for you as you continue this reflection. It might be words or just a felt experience. And then staying with this same person that is in awareness. And then knowing, remembering that they've also already had the worst day of their lives so far. And imagine them going through that. We don't need to get into any graphic Im imagery or details, but just know that they've also had heartache, loss, fear, loneliness, rage.
And this touches into the heart practice of, of Karuna, where the loving, caring, interconnected heart connects to the suffering of others and grows the intention to respond with care. May your suffering ease. May you be at peace. May you be supported through difficulties. Again, just trust your uh, what naturally arises for you. It may be words or just a felt experience of connection in this way. Not getting overwhelmed with the, the story. Touch the heart intention of connecting with the difficulties. If you feel overwhelmed, you can open your eyes, take a break, take a deeper breath, place a hand at the heart. And then taking a deeper breath, releasing that part of the practice. Soften any tension that's come into the body, face, belly, the mind. Feel the body here and now support of the earth. And then feeling the fullness of awareness of the life that you have lived thus far. And remember, some of the moments of what feels like the best day of your life thus far. Times of feeling well, times of feeling seen and cared for, times of feeling stillness and peace in meditation, in nature. Times of, of joy and resonance, perhaps with music, with puppies, I just got to say puppies, <laughs> keeps coming to mind. Um, 
What have been best days? What makes it a best day? Times of laughter. And now check into the felt experience in the body. As you recall, what what time what types of connection and presence have brought that feeling, that remembering of best day for you? How does that feel in the body? And knowing and remembering that this is possible for us. And maybe there's words that naturally arise or just a felt experience. May this safety, this happiness, this peace continue to grow. Really allow yourself to land back into the bones and the flesh, the softness, the heaviness of this present moment. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be peaceful. Imagining yourself as a, a drop in a still pond, a drop in the center of a still pond. And these wishes, intentions, cultivations, actions, rippling out in all directions to those we live with or near, those in our communities, beyond borders and lines, across oceans and mountains. including many-legged, winged, finned, all beings, the earth itself, and all beings. Mm -hmm. 
May all beings everywhere have happiness, safety, well-being, and peace. Oh, I, I hope there's something helpful for you there in that practice to reflect on. And um, I'll put the, the link, as I mentioned, to the, the book cast, The Origins of Our Discontents, and, and the interview from Tom Powers and QCBC Radio um, with this uh, director, Anna DuVernay, and... Um, also the link to the film uh, Origin, very important film. I haven't watched it yet, but it's on my list soon. So, um, hmm. yeah, check it out. I found it uh, a revealing practice that had more layers to it than at first it seemed. So hope there's something helpful there for you. Thanks for joining us.